Welcome to this series of tips on web services. We'll discuss different tips related to RESTful web services, SOAP web services and microservices as well. All the tips we would look at are on our GitHub repository in 28 minutes tips database. You have a wide range of tips in here. Use a contract first approach. That's the tip we would be discussing in this video. What is a contract? A contract is an agreement between the service provider and the service consumer. In every web service, there is a service provider, that's the guy who is providing the service. And there is a service consumer, that's the application which is consuming the service. And the service consumer needs to understand the contract of the service. How do I call the web service? What is the transport that is being used? What is the request structure? What is the response structure? All that is part of the contract. This is also called service definition. In a contract first approach, you would define the contract of your service first and then you would implement the service. When you are developing SOAP web services, you would use WSDL to define your contract. The WSDL will define what is the endpoint, what are all the operations you are exposing, what is the structure of your request, what is the structure of your response. When you are talking about RESTful web services, you use something like Swagger to document your APIs. A Swagger allows you to define what are the different resources you are exposing as part of your API. The details about each operation. So you can see that this operation consumes application XML as well as JSON. And also it gives these response statuses 200, 401, 403 and 404. You can see here that this specific resource slash JPA slash users supports a get operation, a post operation. And the get operation consumes application XML, produces application XML and the different responses and the schema of the response is also present in here. You can see that the schema of the response for this specific thing is of the type user. I can go to the definitions and see what is inside the user. You can see that the definition of the user is here. A user has a birth date, an ID, a name and also an array of posts. You can also see that there is a description. So it says birth date should be in the past. In the contract first approach, what you do is you would create the swagger definition by hand or through the application, but before really implementing the service. So you'd focus on either writing the swagger documentation or creating your WSDL first. One of the most important things about using the contract first approach is by defining your contract first, you are thinking about consumers and how they will consume this service. You're not worrying about the implementation details. One of the problems with focusing on the implementations first is the technical details start to creep into your service definitions. You'd want your service definitions to be independent of the platform which is being used. They should be independent of whether you're using Java, whether you're using .NET or anything like that. By defining your contract first, you are making sure that your contract and your service is independent of the platform that is being used. Until the next tip, bye-bye. Do not forget to check out our tips database for more tips on a wide range of topics. Until I see you in another In 28 Minutes video, here's bye from the team here at In 28 Minutes.